You're listening to the Cricket Podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Cricket Podcast for another packed show. We've got more Ashes action as the Aussie women retain the Ashes, and we preview the fourth men's test. Before we move on to some other test match cricket, India are in action, Sri Lanka are in action, West Indies are in action, and Pakistan are in action. Not necessarily in that order. If we have time, we'll also do some major league cricket and questions. I'm Jack Hope. I'm joined by Max Rowe Brown. How are you doing, Max Rowe Brown? Hello. I'm very well, thank you. Um, it's nice. We've all got the same webcam now, so we're all uh, exactly in the same proportion, exactly the same definition. So lucky you, YouTube viewer. Yeah. Unlucky you if you're listening on Spotify. Go and have a look and see how <laughs> sharp we are. <laughs> exactly. You can see all the crow's feet on our slightly sun-worn aging faces uh we've got ross leg <laughs> here as well how are you doing ross leg are you feeling sun worn after the, the weekend of cricket yeah I'm, I'm aching today i played back-to-back games so uh when you're into your 30s and uh i used to do that for fun in uh, in my 20s now i uh, need some wheels on this chair so I can get around. <laughs> Uh, ah, fantastic. Um, on, the, on the topic of cricket, let's do a sponsor shout out straight away. We are sponsored by Serious Cricket. Use the code TCP23 for 10% off cricket equipment over at SeriousCricket.co.uk. I bought some new boots for them for the weekend. Uh, things were going well. I was 19, not out. We were chasing 135. We were on 75 for three max. It was looking good. Um, I was run out, so the boots didn't save me. <laughs> On, on that, that occasion you weren't not run out fault. by the boots <laughs> not run out by the boots but I, I was run out um you can head over to serious cricket and and hopefully have a better day out than i did with your new equipment they, they look good um, they look good you, you have to be a good yeah. player to have neon green boots jack and uh, Ooh, i nice. like that you've got you've gone uh you've just gone with a bit of fleck you know like um the boy racers used to have like the the detailing down the side <laughs> of the car flames you've done that but to your shoes which i i respect um, yeah, the keeper actually did notice they had green laces. I didn't. I didn't even notice they had green laces, and the keeper was giving me some um, for, for having boots with green laces. You're opening yourself up to it. It's a bit like a centre back having like those those bright yellow, flashy ones, the messy shoes. Yeah. Well, look. Normally, I get the best of the team, so so jokes on them. On this particular <laughs> occasion, on this particular occasion, Cash, our, our dashing number four, ran me out. Um, and, and then I was, it was it was actually a great game. Just to digress slightly. We were, we were 75 for three, chasing 135. You're, it's in the bag. It's absolutely in the bag there. Four and five are both on 20, not out. Yeah, a little bit of a wobble, but we're, we're cruising. Uh, I'm run out. The next over, Cash, number four, dashing number four, smashes one down long off throat for no reason. We had 30 <laughs> overs to get 60 more runs. Just <laughs> hit it to the only fielder on the boundary. Uh, we collapse. We're 104 for nine, and then our 11 and 10 get the, get the winning runs. Um, the guy who hit the winning runs, he hit his first boundary two weeks ago. Unbelievable. Unreal, but... <laughs> and, yeah, he's 32. <laughs> he, li- he literally, like, there's a spinner came on, he tracked him, hit before. <laughs> Everyone could not believe what was happening. Right. We are actually here to talk about professional cricket. We don't just, um, you know, sometimes, sometimes something good happens in amateur cricket and, it, and it's worth getting on the show. And, it, and if you can do that as part of an ad, sure. Let's get on to the real deal. We'll start with the women's ashes because we have. We have something of a result in the series now, don't we? I said the Aussie women have won. Well, they've they won the match that meant they retain the Ashes, which is kind of like winning the Ashes, I think. Ross, did you catch any of it on Sunday? Did you enjoy it? What What were your thoughts? Yeah, I, I, what I thought is that Alyssa Perry is still insanely good. Um, it still must be so frustrating for to, like to play. You know, actually, I'm going to make a nice little comparison here. You know, like in the tennis at Wimbledon, they've only had like four champions since, until tomorrow for like the last 20 years. It feels yeah. like to me, since I've been following cricket, Alyssa Perry has been the person in women's cricket who's always just dominating. And Australia have been dominating for so long. And it was kind of her again hitting runs here um, that made what well, ultimately was a, was a big difference alongside um, Georgia Wareham's kind of what, I think it was 20 or 24 off the final over that kind of propelled 26. them to... 26. 26. 26. Yeah. Was it 26? Yeah. It was 26. Yeah. Wow. Mm. Um, and that it's just one of those signs of a champion team where you've got big champion players and in clutch moments um, pulling things out of the bag. Um, but what I was really impressed with, and maybe this is... Maybe I don't know whether it's a losing attitude, I don't know, but I was actually really quite proud of what the England women have done in this series. Um, they have not kind of bowed down um, they've gone pretty much toe-to-toe toe with the Australians. And I'm not sure if this is 
England reaching their peak and there's still a, there's still a little bit more to go and you can see some of the younger players like Alex Capsi etc kind of coming through and really showing like England can make that next step up and be aggressive as well in terms of the ODIs and T20s um, or it's Australia actually going down the other side of their peak um, and it's, it's quite a nice positioning at the moment and we've still got one more um, ODI to go and England can kind of still draw um, the Ashes. I know it kind of stays with Australia, but that would be a big, big achievement, I think. I think it would be pretty f- phenomenal as well. Um, if they, if they, you know, I, what, what England have achieved so far, I think, yeah, Ross, you can be proud of that. I think they'll be proud of it. I think they'll really want to draw the series overall. I think that would be a huge statement. Um, if they were to do that, they'd have won both of the white ball series against, you know, the the god squad basically they're they're (laughs) they're really really excellent the the australian women's team um max a question for you do you think this is england really playing up and fulfilling some potential do you think there's maybe a bit of luck in there do you think the aussies aren't aren't firing on all cylinders or is this maybe a sign that the rest of the world is catching up with the the aforementioned god squad well i think the fact that every game so far has been so close and you know it's it's over a a reasonable period of time now and and three formats of cricket and i think it's an indication that that maybe the gap is finally closing maybe there's a belief aspect in there maybe you know after the test match being so close and england being in a position where i mean realistically they were in a position to win that game and mm. you know it was a an amazing spell of um bowling and perhaps a, a bit of a bit of nerves that ended um ended that that hope but maybe that gave them, I don't know, a bit of belief to think, hang on a minute, actually, we are as good as these guys. Maybe a change of attitude. I mean, they spoke, um, it was the the ODI, the last ODI game, wasn't it? Kate, Kate Cross basically was um, saying the the message was just, it it's not um, it's not Ash Gardner bowling at you, it's just an off spinner. You play them in the nets all the time. And then maybe that change of attitude has brought about something, a bit of fearlessness that's allowed them to get that bit. Closer, because I mean, we've always known the quality of some of the, uh, the England players, and it's again, it was like they were in a position to win this game, and it's gone down to maybe a couple of tough drop catches. Although Australia dropped a couple as well, so maybe that evens out. But you know, obviously, the last over was um, a massive turning point in um, in the game. But I, I think I think we are seeing um, a sign of things getting a bit closer. And like you say, I mean, this Australia team has been around for almost forever it seems so that it's hard to sustain a level when you're the best in the world like you <laughs> you've got to get yourself up to the task of trying to beat everyone all the time and and that's not necessarily always the easiest thing to do so maybe they've had a bit of a shock as well at, at England coming out but I think yeah drawing the series has um, got to be on the cards and something they'll be looking for but um, as you say as much as I'll be proud of their performance, I think they will have to be sitting there looking and thinking of this as a missed opportunity. Australia have been there for the taking in this series, and you know they've they've won some some brilliant games, but the ones they lost, they'll be sitting looking at them and there'll be regrets about oh, how those you're, games you're were gonna, lost. You're going to be a t- you're going to be a tough dad one day, Max. You are. <laughs> oh, I don't I'm know. not I, saying I I'm not saying they should feel that way. Or they should be proud, 100. percent But they will be disappointed. And um, and that's the kind of attitude you want. You need to have, I suppose, if you want to catch up with the best in the world. But Absolutely. yeah, you know, I I think it's been a fantastic series, and uh, it would be really really nice if they can go out and win the final ODI. And like you say, Jack, win winning those two white ball series against the world champions, that's that's huge. Yeah, I I agree with you, Max. I think that they'll they'll they will ultimately be disappointed. Uh, there's no way. I I was watching the the, the first innings. Um, it kind of clashes. It was one of those games that clashes with Wimbledon. And my girlfriend's yeah. quite into Wimbledon this year, so I, yeah. I, I think. And it was the... one of one of the finals of all time. Well, but, yeah, but it's a cricket going, podcast. So we'll go on that. for a long time, doesn't it, tennis? <laughs> uh, you know, people talk about cricket. No, not like cricket. Five cricket hours. Five hours of just two guys. Anyway, like um, <laughs> I, uh, so I watched. I watched the last ten overs, and I, I, I think England blew it slightly. I think they uh, Perry back quite well, but not that well. Um, used up a lot of balls, dropping her three times. I, I think any any one of those catches taken, you just sort of really really derail the innings. And then the mm-hmm. final over to go for twenty six, and it's not a good over as well. It's not 
it, what, look, look, anytime you get 37 or 14 balls, you're batted well, but there is a yin to the yang. Like you need a few balls in the slot to dump over mid wicket um, yeah. to do that. And, and I, I think, I think uh, going into that final over, if England should have been like, look, if they get 10 here, great. Let's bowl an over that goes for 10 and we'll be chasing, what, what would that have been? 265? 260, yeah. 270? Yeah. yeah. Like you're, you're, that's, that's extremely gettable. 280 odd is, was pretty tough. And even with Silver Brunt batting exceptionally well, taking down to the final, what, three balls? Was it nine or three balls, eight or three balls? Yeah. Um, well, it was five off the still, last one. It was one basically, just, yeah. basically just a, a few too many runs. And, and that over, the last 10 overs in general for England uh, with the ball were were mildly sloppy. Um, well, and the, that, the I think is the difference. Engine room didn't fire, did it, either? So Danny yeah. Wyatt and Alex Capsi in the middle, they, they are there to try well, and yeah. put pressure back on the team. They just didn't fire, unfortunately. Exactly. And I think as well, you see every single time we talk about this Australia team, we, we say it again, every single one of those players is like a world 11 player. Like they, they all contribute so much. And and again, you know, like they, there's no other women's team in the world, none, where the player batting at what, eight comes in and gets 37 or 14 balls. Yeah, I mean, it does yeah. not happen. Right? There, <laughs> there isn't another so team to do that. And that's that. Like I do think England made some mistakes, but that's still that's extreme talent there. And again, with the ball, they've got about seven thousand spinners. It seems um, packed into that eleven, yeah. <laughs> and, they're, and they're all the best in the world at bowling spin. So it's 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 well, Eccleston aside, obviously, but it's kind of they crush you from all angles. Mm. So that's that. Um, should we move on to the men? Yeah, we shall move on to the men then. Uh, where shall. do we want to start here? So we, we've talked about it a few times. We should maybe start with the England team because we actually know. Um, the 11 there and I'm hoping if things have gone well that one of you has got the 11 up in front of you and can recite that to me uh, I'm looking at Ross he has a smile on his face so I'm going to throw you As that hospital pass Ross yeah go England 11 we've got, we got, we got uh, Marcus Treskothic opening up with um... <laughs> And then Nick Peter Trager. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, the, the, the big thing is, is you've got Zach Crawley opening up with Duckett. Moeen Alley is scheduled to come in at three. They're keeping with that experiment. Uh, Joe Root's in at four. Harry Brook is returning to his favoured fifth position. Um, Stokes is in at six. Bearstow's in at seven. And then you've got kind of the, the master of kind of what Wood, Broad, um, Anderson and... Wokes. Whoever the other well, Wokes, yeah, Wokes so, at eight, um, yeah, yeah, Wokes at eight. Yeah. So uh, I like so the two selection the decisions ultimately are, are keeping keeping Moeen Ali at three and um, Jimmy Anderson coming in for Robinson, which I think is is a big that's a big call. I think. Right, which one should we do first? Let's do it. Let's do Moeen at three. Max, this is the ultimate basball move, isn't it? Like they yeah. they saw it they saw it not work in the second innings <laughs> at, at at Headingley, but because. Because what happened later did work, they've been like, the vibes must be right. Moeen will bat at three. And that means Brooke will get a match-winning yeah. 80 for us at, yeah, man. Uh, at Old Trafford. It's um, all about the Feng Shui. It... They've moved the sofa into a place <laughs> where it doesn't really go. But that means the armchair really pings. And it really sets off the feature wall. And, um, and as a whole, that's a better room. Than it was before, and that's what England are going for here, right? Okay. Moeen Ali, what's um... at three compared to Moeen Ali at seven, probably isn't going to make that much difference. But if you can then make sure that Root's happy at four, Brooks happy at five, um, the 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 benefit you get from that, I think they've decided is worth it. Um, and then you know maybe Moeen gets a quick quick, quick twenty, and that's like that's all right isn't it i mean we've been we've been trying an experiment that hasn't worked for a about two years is your test about? match number three what? yeah yeah i think it, genuinely i think point. if Moeen gets a quick 20 they're going to be looking at that being like job done that's worked I, genuinely 100 percent. I, I i agree with that um i, I agree <laughs> not with saying it's right <laughs> it is it is kind of bonkers i i've got another question though here Who's Joe Root in this analogy? Is he like the fireplace? You can't really move the fireplace. From yeah. The floor. The fireplace yeah. Is, is a permanent. Or he's just, there. just like um, the floorboards that you've really beautifully sanded down and varnished. Yeah. So it's like, it's a perfect aspect of the room, but you can't move the floor. Um, even though um, we've got subsidence and it would be better if we did raise the floor, maybe up just, <laughs> just, just one. Just for now. Just yeah. one. 
<laughs> yeah, just just for a little bit. Uh, Ross, um, I, 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 my contention, and I think I said this on the podcast. If I didn't, I'm sorry. There was that for in this particular set of circumstances, Route Three is an absolute no-brainer. Um, you're nodding. Yeah. Why is there? Mate, is this a double bluff? Is Root going to bat three and Moeen's no, going to no, bat no, three? No, no, no. Moeen Ali is going to bat three. Moeen Ali has a batting average of 13.14 <laughs> at three. Right. Okay. Okay. That's, that's, that's the most recent that Like I said, 20. Good result. Yeah. It's se- seven, seven innings. He's, he's had uh, third position. Uh, 92 runs into <laughs> community total at that position. Like, he is not built for number three. Um, but. It's it's what they want to do to protect that middle order. Like, what what is the best case scenario? Like, he batted, I think, what uh, not last test, the test before, um, when Jack you were saying, oh, we batted too slowly, kind of in that position, um, and I think he faced forty six balls in there. That's like the best case scenario for what yeah. happens here. Like, we are, we are shifting back to the dentury. That is what England are doing right now. We we need to if we lose a quick wicket, we need to get somebody in there as a sacrifice just to protect that middle middle um, middle over which is where we have the best batsman of England's all time position. He's still got he's got a good record at 3 as well. And you know, we got Brooke, Bairstow and Stokes going to be in that position. It just yeah, it, it feels well, I mean, stra- it feels no, strange. I don't, I don't know how to feel about it. If you don't play root there, I mean, like I, like we, I, I, I am, I understand. Max, you made the argument about the furniture, and that probably is very close to the discussion. Genuinely, pretty close, I reckon, to the discussion they had when they decided they were going to do this. Moe and Ali, the chaise lounge. <laughs> yeah, um, but I like, I am looking at this, and I'm thinking like root could bat, bat at three. Brooke tried it once. He only had one go. They <laughs> were like, no, back down to five. <laughs> yeah. And uh, all the rope they gives that crawly opening. Yeah. Like, you get one chance and one chance only, Brookie. <laughs> um, Stokes doesn't bowl anymore. He's a full time batter with, with, a, with an excellent technique. Pretty good against. You can't move Stokes. Mate. You can't move Stokes. But Stokes, Stokes is not allowed as well. What Stokes. Nope. Is, if if he's not the if if Root isn't the fireplace, then Stokes must be the fireplace. Yeah, he's definitely the fireplace. Yeah. He's, he's got ginger yeah. hair, he's on fire. Um, Brilliant, thank you. So you, uh, so by process of elimination, because other people cannot be moved for various reasons, it is going to be Moeen Ali. And I, I think I'm just going to put this on record. I think this is bonkers. I think over under as well. I think England know this. I think they do know this is back bonkers. I think if you said right now, forty runs Moeen Ali for the test, they'd bite your hand off for it. <laughs> I think they'd be like, yes, yeah. that's such a good deal. Yeah, um, yeah. Move, and that move is the yeah, yeah, that is absolutely <laughs> preposterous. That the where that that is actually a thought process. And, that, and the, the other, we're, the all, other we're, thing, we're all brainwashed. It's, it's preposterous, we're and we're okay with it. No, but that's, that's not okay. Right. I'm, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm one of the biggest moment Ali fans going. But it's not England's Test match number three. We're going to what? He, he literally only unretired two tests ago. <laughs> not three tests ago. It looks like this is <laughs> madness. I think the other thing. I mean, like, what what's going on here? There's there's a big there's a wider dynamic going on where. Three tests. We're into going into the fourth test of five test series where both sides have suffered some injuries. Um, the series has taken on sort of a, a bigger, you know, a, a, a bigger. It's a it's a bigger moment in Ashes history than the average Ashes series. I think it's a bigger mm-hmm. moment in cricket history than the the average Ashes Seminal. series. You know, it's 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 Bad's ball. The new the new boys versus the World Test champions. Um, it's a team trying to win an Ashes series away for the first time in twenty years. Uh, it's got the focus of the home nation in a way that not all Ashes series do capture the imagination. It's, it's you know, one in two, one in three, probably capture the the feeling, the moment of the summer in the way that this one has. And basically all to, both, both teams are now just like, well, we've got to go all in. We'll get to Australia and, and their country because they're just as bonkers as Moe and Ali at, at three, I reckon. But like, that is basically what England are doing. They're, they're not thinking about this logically. They're thinking with what we have sort of at hand right now, who can we jam into number three and maybe get 40 runs from? And they're looking, looking up and down and they've been like, well, it has to be Moe and Ali. And, and I'm sure, fair, he's, I'm he's, sure he's a senior a... player, right? He is a senior player. He's got no career to play for, right? He's literally just like, he's got, you get a free, free, free roll of the dice. They've got, yeah, they've I, got an I, 11 I, piece puzzle set. And um, basically they, they put it together and they've gone, I don't think this quite works. So how do we make it look the best it can with the 11 pieces they've got? And not for, yeah, actually, yeah. are the other two pieces in this box over here? I don't know. 
Right, look, so that's Moen. I mean, I think we've said our piece on it. 40 runs, if they get that, I think England will have done pretty well. Uh, and the he'll be there one, at the Oval. Um, and this is, this, is, this is slightly bonkers, I think. Uh, Ollie Robertson, you know, he goes down injured. He, he writes in his column that actually he was fit to bowl on the third day of the test and that he's 100% fit for Manchester. He wrote that three days ago. I said it on TalkSport yesterday, um, and that's obviously been proved to be wrong, but I did correct the presenter twice. So yeah, that was funny. It was 2-1. What, what goes around comes around, yeah. Uh, England, have, <laughs> instead, they've gone for a guy with 680 wickets, and still some England fans aren't satisfied with that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Russ, can you talk me through why England were wrong to replace their injured player with a man with 680 test wickets? <laughs> So I just think in terms of uh, if, if someone is declaring themselves fit, and I mean, he did have back spasms, sure, but Ollie Robinson has bowled pretty well, I think, over this the course of uh, over the course of the Ashes. Um, Jimmy Anderson has unfortunately not. Jimmy Anderson has bowled, well, for uh, Jimmy Anderson standards, like below par um, is probably the polite way he'd probably put it. So I think, again... There's the bit around the batting as well in in this test match. You've seen how important the runs have been down the down the tail um, for England and for Australia to that matter as well. Um, Jimmy Anderson can't bat like this, this fundamentally, but we but we're falling back into England three four years ago where we are trying to talk about bowlers as if how good they are at batting. Um, and so Jimmy Anderson has got a point to prove. Um, which we know quite a lot of these England players, Johnny Bairstow, Stuart Broad, Jimmy Anderson falls into that category, Stokes falls into that category. When they have something to prove, they typically perform or overperform um, in the game. So it is at Old Trafford, which is Jimmy Anderson's home gr- home ground. There's a Jimmy Anderson uh, end, which he'll probably be bowling from. So again, I think this is it's a narrative pick. Ben Stokes has been at the IPL. He's been with MS Dhoni. He's seen the rich tapestry of the IPL and how that gets written. And he's just like, this has to be the right thing. Jimmy Anderson coming back, home ground, almost farewell test match. It can only go brilliantly for England. I think there's a bunch of things wrong with that. I don't know if people play better when they when they prove a point. Mainly, my main objection, though, is you don't write a tapestry. Um, <laughs> tapestries famously not written um max ross seems to be fine james anderson uh are, are you mm, yeah should josh tong uh, should we have gone there should england, well, have, uh, should england have josh tong i mean i, th- I think I, i'm definitely in the camp of pick the guy with 680 test wickets not the mm-hmm. bloke who's played two tests and looked decent like you have literally the guy who is your all-time best and he's had a few games where he's been slightly off the boil. Does that mean that he's old and past it and can't do it? Maybe. Maybe this is the end of James Addison. But I think it's also just as likely that actually he's just having a few off days because, I don't know, maybe he maybe he was injured. shoe wasn't on quite properly. Maybe he's not quite, wasn't quite ready. Maybe, I mean, I don't know. There could be a bunch of reasons. Maybe he didn't have a good enough breakfast but like it's this is a guy who is literally a legend and still he's been getting better that's the thing like we've been saying james oh, he's 40 now like can he still do it and then he's been going overseas bowling in you know india or and, and he's been bowling better than he's ever done away from home and he's improving like there, there was a record about how many wickets he gets in the in the second innings of test match and he's been improving that he's been making improvements on his game at the age of 38 39 40 so I, I think just to look at a few games and be like well he's been he's been crap we should probably get rid of him i think taking him out of the last test was 100 percent the right thing to do and give him a chance just to reset and I, I think bringing him back is is absolutely fine i mean robinson maybe he is fit but he played three tests on the bounce and and he broke down so i think it's also worth giving him a giving him a rest and josh tong is what you pick if neither of those two are available. Okay, well, there we go. Let's do let's do some Australian stuff. Uh, the big question here is going to, I think, be Dave Warner at the top of the order. Now, there's been some developments on this run, um, and we'll, I'm going to talk you through the developments. Uh, Barrett Sunderason, who I'm pretty sure hot, at this time... Hot off is, the press. His full-time job, I think, is to go to the Australian Nets and tweet about what is happening at the Australian Nets. That, that just, he just seems it's to follow them gig. around the world. Great gig it? if you can get yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, he said that only three Australian batters have been 
practicing with the new ball, Warner, Harris and Kawaja, which I think scotches some of the crazy suggestions that people were throwing out in into the, the cricketing ether. Uh, that would suggest there's no green going up there, no Marsh and no Marnus. So we can narrow it down to three. I think uh, there's Travis, also been... This... Travis, Travis Head was in that mixer as well, by the way. Yeah, yeah, but not practicing with the new ball. And that is crucial here, Mac, uh, Max Ross. Um They've been a bit, there's been a bit of a charm offensive from some of the Aussies as well. Kawaja, one of the greatest openers of all time. He, he called Dave Warner, which may be fair. He, he's been pretty good. Uh, Marcus Harris, the other opener, the guy who could get the job. Dave is obviously a bit of a lightning rod for opinion, but I think they've done really well as an opening partnership when you can get the team off to a good start. And slightly controversial after So he, he doesn't, he doesn't fancy it then. That's what I'm hearing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, most interestingly, though, is the third entrant in the charm offensive, and this actually comes from the David English Warner, <laughs> Stuart Broad. Stuart Broad <laughs> is a direct quote. No, the truth is, I've always found it difficult bowling to Davy, and I still do. So, Ross, um, what's going on here? Is this? <laughs> is this? It, Broad is. He's definitely been the double agent here, isn't he? He's Shit, Housery number one. Don't pick. Don't pick David Warner. And Australia, they've fallen into it here. Like the both other openers are, are, are like, yeah, we want Davy out there. Even the guy who who would have would have got the job, they go yeah. with Warner, aren't they? That, that's what no, the tea leads are pointing to Warner. Yeah, they they go to Warner. Like they, they there's I don't think they can move around it, right? I think there is just that bit. I, it, if if Stuart Broad is saying that he finds it really difficult to bowl through, and he's only he's only taken this wicket like seventeen. Well, times. I said the, the like, problem you know, that Stuart Broad's got is it's really hard for him to decide which method of dismissal he's going to go for at any given time. <laughs> Yeah. It's really confusing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what what celebration am I going to do when I take yeah, this guy's so much It's so difficult. Um, yeah, well, Warner playing, I'm not surprised. Um, I, it is one of those things. The guy is clearly coming to the end of his test match career. Um, and maybe it's just that one last hurrah, right? Go out and play with freedom. And maybe they're trying to get, uh, the, maybe the nine day rest has actually done him a world of good. And he will go out and play with that freedom. Um, but the issue still remains that Stuart Broad bowls the same delivery Warner gets out in the same way. Um, I will put uh, a nice bet on with anyone who's uh, in the in the YouTube comments of him snicking off to Broad to Zach Crawley at second slip. Yeah, I think there's 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 certainly the possibility of that. Um, uh, if we assume Warner is going to play, and I think it probably is fair to say that he will, that that means they'll have some selection choices to make later on. Uh, there was some mm. more buzz coming out of Aussie team training at Old Trafford. And we saw the pitch, by the way. Not that green pitch report. No. Not that looked like a normal pitch. Um, Marsh B Green probably becomes the other choice, Max, because surely <laughs> no brainer, absolutely Murphy. no brainer. This one. Well, Mitch Marsh um, vibes. That has to they be, had has to be Mitch Marsh. Has to be. They had. They were doing slip practice, Ross, and they had Mitch Marsh at gully with Cam Green running running with the reserves. Why do they go with Marsh? I don't understand. Well, he's he's just battered a century against us. <laughs> No, that's, that's a big one. And he was more potent with the ball than Cam Green was. Um, so I think that you you can't drop a guy, you can't parachute a guy in who then hits a century and then go, thanks, mate, see you later. Here's a guy, we're going to have to bring in this big, big guy who's actually hit no no runs at all and bowl like a fucking drain. Like, this is not going to happen. Mitch Marsh, that is his spot for Australia. Max, I think this is, I was talking about this with England. Like, th you're, you're making the selections for now. This is pure payoff. There's no, in, there's no, thinking about the future they're not worried about pakistan coming over to, to australia later in the year or whatever they are basically thinking mitch marsh cameron green we've decided we're going with david warner only one of you can fit in and, and is ross right that they should go for marsh or is actually you know two tests ago same same situation same situation same decision making and that they, they went with green like yeah it has the paradigm shifted has it actually shifted that much from one from one game and one innings, I mean, I, I don't, I don't think so. I think like, do you, oh, who do you think is your, eight. who do you think is your best all rounder, uh, and that's the one you go with. Like Mitch Marsh um, scored a very good belligerent hundred um, in a in a losing effort. Um, it should be <laughs> it should be mentioned. Um, I he he looks all right with the ball, but I mean, he got a couple of wickets from just. England players. Was it Zach Crawley was one of them? So, you know, that's just a free wicket when he's... Both of them. Both of them. Both of them. Right. Zach Crawley in his 40s were both of his wickets. I mean, that's just free, isn't it? That's a free wicket. Um, and 
I mean, he could have been he could have been caught in the slips on twelve, and we wouldn't even be talking about this. But I, I, I think I mean you have to say like yeah, it was a brilliant performance and and fair play to him stepping up. But like if he was in there because Cameron Green was injured, and they think he's the better player, then I would then you got to, you stick with it. But maybe maybe Cameron Green's still not quite feeling it with the was it a hamstring or a groin he he had some something yeah. like that so maybe that's maybe that well, maybe, he maybe, it. maybe he plays instead of Boland maybe they go do you know what I all we need to draw, do is draw the, all we need to do is draw this game well there's going to be some rain about look um, we have done a little bit longer on the Ashes than we expected there's a lot to talk about uh, we will be doing shows after Wednesday Thursday Friday and Sunday we don't we don't do Saturday that's the that's the day of us playing come on uh give us that um so we'll be we'll be you know seeing what happens then and talking about the selection stuff then as well can we have some predictions though really quickly ross i know you're leaving it after this little mm -hmm. segment so you can go first who do you think is going to win the crucial fourth test all vibes england okay max um i think i think england are gonna it's gonna be a famous declaration to uh try and get a victory out of a, a potentially wet draw situation and uh, it's going to spectacularly backfire and Australia are going to win I'm going to go with the draw I think that I think we're going to lose the whole of Saturday and, yeah it um, doesn't look great does it I mean, fucking playing cricket in Manchester that's so stupid uh, <laughs> lads don't worry they won't the be in 2027 done. it's fine <laughs> yeah exactly good good thank god um, that's the ashes done we're going to take a quick break. Uh, then Max and I are going to reconvene to talk about some test cricket from around the world. We had, there, was some, there was some T20 blast action talking about teams from the South doing mm. well. Mm. Cricket in the South. So maybe we'll cover that. Oh, the summer set. And uh, a couple of questions. Ross, goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> 